In the spirit of the holiday season, the good folks at the Driftwood are proud to present the following Yuletide extravaganza. Hollywood, California. A typically warm, sunny winter day. It's Christmas holiday time and the city is bustling. Bustling with gossip, that is. And watch this. Even the stars on Hollywood Boulevard's Walk of Fame talking to each other? This I've gotta hear. Hey, holiday. Did you hear the latest? Frank Bailey came out of retirement to make a Christmas film. That's wonderful news. Who is he again? Oh, come on, you know. Frank Bailey, the movie director. Oh, he made some great films. Mr. Mnugin goes to America. Meet Bert Heyman. Arsenic and Old Miracles. Mr. Papadopoulos goes to Athens. Some of the greatest old-fashioned Hollywood films ever made. Classics. Yeah, he sure made my favorites. I never laughed such happy tears. Ah, it sounds like a bunch of barely ball to me, see? Hmm. To me, it sounds wonderful. It's just what the world needs right now. A Frank Bailey movie. Just hold my ankles. Be careful, Jenny. Yeah. Oh, look at that, right there. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. Rachel, move. Ah. Hey, Uncle Bob, hold on. Oh, oh, come on. I'm not that steady up here, Bob. What about Grandma? Come on, Grandma. All right, everybody say you. You. So, Mary, what do you think? I think the tree looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful, isn't it? Not half as beautiful as you are, though. Oh, this baby is just too thin. Look what happens when you poke him in the ribs. <sighs> Grandma, he's just been fed. Well, where's the picture? This thing's just a blank. Yeah, well, Uncle Bob, you're using old film here. This pack is dated February 1977. Ah, the date's just for show. Didn't smell bad to me. I'll get it. Our first chemical bank, ma'am. Uh, uh, we come to uh, repossess your furniture. Dear, on Christmas Eve. Well, it's a job, ma'am. I'm real sorry. Well, it just doesn't seem right. No one should have to work on Christmas Eve. Put that down. Girls, why don't you offer I get some punch? Oh, okay, sure. Uncle Bob, did you remember to pay back the loan that, that Mary and I co-signed for you? I, I, I'm sure I mailed that check just yesterday. Mary. Listen, everybody, I'm sure we can work this all out. Why don't you sit down and cook, and I'll chat up the potatoes. <laughs> You'd like to, like to chat up the potatoes? Frank, sh she'd like to chat up the potatoes. So okay, cut. I wasn't <laughs> Frank, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just not concentrating. There's just so much to remember. Can we just try it one more time? Amy, you're doing fine. Now, everybody, that was wonderful, but you're going to try it one more time. It, Amy, don't worry about your lines. You know your lines. This time, just think about the happiest Christmas that you can remember. That's all this scene is about. All right. All right, let's try it again. Thank you. Now, isn't he a nice guy? I've always liked him. One hell of a director, that Frank Bailey. I hope it works out for him. This could be his best picture yet. I'd like to think so. I really would. But there seems to be a dark cloud hanging over the horizon in the person of one Marty Simmons. Marty Simmons? I used to like his pictures. Yeah, so did I. Until he started making those cheap teenage sex movies and going for the fast buck. Oh, it'll be a bleak Christmas for dear old Frank Bailey. I knew I should have left that guy in the back lot instead of letting him go off on location to some stupid lodge in... Where the hell are we going? Goose Pines, Vermont. Goose Pines, Vermont, he shoots in. Give me a break. Why do you wear so much makeup? Why do you have to wear so much makeup? You know I hate it. Okay, I, I know you're only saying these things to me because you're frustrated about your work. You know, Frank Bailey's gonna give you a great Christmas movie. Frank Bailey is passe. He's dated. I can't believe it. I give that guy his first chance to direct a movie in 30 years, and what is he giving me? Sentimental schlock. You didn't think it was schlock when you sold this idea to the studio. It was a gimmick, Jeannie. 
You make a crazy Christmas movie. You get Frank Bailey's name above the title. It's a million dollar idea. Well, the studios aren't buying it now. They're getting cold feet. And quite frankly, I don't blame them one bit. I mean, who the hell knows who Frank Bailey is today? You do. I do, that's right. And now my ass is on the line. Well, sorry, I gotta do something about it. I gotta think fast. Right, Toby? Right on, Marty. You better believe it. I'm 100% behind you on that. Well, I've got to admit, though, it is kind of pretty up here at this time of year, isn't it? It's kind of the way I remember it when I was a kid. I don't know, maybe I've been spending too much time on the West Coast. Maybe. <sighs> Smell that fresh air. Punks! That's a wrap for today. Starting tomorrow, there's going to be a few major changes on this movie. Uh, now, wait a second, Simmons. I think those decisions should be left to the director, don't you? Yes, I do. Meet my hot new director, Mr. Toby Durant. I've always been a tremendous... All right, where the hell are the writing offices? Come out, we need writing offices. How are you supposed to write? And he's pushed paint. And he's got a card. The Christmas tree, come on. Oh, we got to put that in a script. Green, green is great in Holly. Don't forget Holly. Oh, Holly is good. Oh, look at what I'm in, boss. Let's use it. Come on, put that in who are these people? Only six of contemporary Corman's finest comedy writers. Excuse me. Our union will not allow you to just roll in here anytime you feel like it and fire our director. It won't? Well, I guess I'll just have to fire you then. Get off the set! You don't have to fire me. I quit. All right, everybody, who's coming with me? I don't understand what's happening here. Is there no room for discussion, Mr. Simmons? Of course there is, Mr. Bailey. We're all going to sit down and we're going to discuss this thing. Is your name Mr. Simmons? I just thought that... You'll think what I pay you to think, Jeannie. Now set up a casting call for tomorrow. Girls 15 to 15 and a half with well-shaped bodies, but nice young faces, you know, but women's shapes, but nice firm yes, skin. Uh, Mr. Simmons, uh, please at least allow me the courtesy of a meeting. Well, we're taking a dinner here tonight. You can join us if you must. But later, for drinks. If I uh, just had a chance... Uh, I want those character likability to... quotients really, ready by I... dinner, Jeannie, all right? Then wear something sexy. What are you going to wear? We will return to It's a Wonderful Film following these messages. Formulated plot lines, along with marketing research and detailed study of character likability quotients, leave absolutely nothing to the imagination. That's the beauty of it. Wow, that is so dead on. That's the beauty of it. You said something, Jeannie? Oh, no, believe me. I, I would dare say boo. What happened here, huh? Did I go out for cigarettes? Did I fall asleep or what? This is scary, Buster. Somebody is not who they used to be. Frank, sit down. Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. I don't need anything. Oh, you'll be needing something to wash down, but this guy's going to be hanging you. She's, uh, she's drunk. Well, that's all right. I'm sure you believe you have very good reason, don't you, Miss Bundy? Yes. I drink too much. Frank, you know what the greatest irony of this whole mess is? I was a big fan of yours. I grew up watching Frank Bailey films. No one ever did anything without good reason in your films, did they? Just good people making the best of a bad situation. The way life should be instead of... instead of uh, the way it really is. <clears throat> that is exactly the kind of film I want to make for you, Mr. Simmons. Simmons? Yeah, that's not Marty Simmons. Oh, no way. Marty Simmons would never fire an idol. Did you know you... Frank! 
I know this business. And the kinds of films that you and I want to make just don't sell today. The kids don't want them. But how do the poor youth of today know what they want when all you hand them is... They don't have to know. It's my job to tell them. Now, look, I'll be honest with you. I've got a three-picture deal, and you're not helping. This Christmas movie has to make money. That's the bottom line. Sorry, but I'm going to have to let you go. Don't take it personally. Just business. You're in a sad state, Mr. Simmons. But I believe all hope may not be lost yet. Good evening. Who are you? Jeannie. Oh, no, you're not. That's my name. Jeannie. You're not going to take that away from me. We've got a long drive tomorrow. We've got a lot of work to do, so just go to bed. Oh, yeah, go to bed. You go. Oh, sure. Marty Simmons. You still want to make Frank Bailey films? Yeah, oh yeah. But then this creature started growing out of his, what, c computer, bank account, right? Like some, it grew like some kind of Manitou thing, some kind of... I give up. I... She's lucky I don't need foreplay. wrapping paper on the floor you can't even walk ah! <laughs> i like to see that in a movie <laughs> wait wait how about we put a christmas bow in the guy's ear to really punch that gag home ah! <laughs> no 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 jevin otis at a christmas party when a guy gets drunk the first thing to go in the knee yeah, jevin otis, they turn into rubber and a guy's gotta walk and he can't and he's gotta go to the john you know he's not gonna make it ah! <laughs> and the whole knees are doing this they <laughs> Listen, I'm heading back to the coast now. You know how treacherous these roads get after dark up here in the sticks. I want you to wrap things up in a week on schedule. And don't go over budget. Right. What's the key word? Demographics. Good boy. All right. Go do, babe. OK, let's roll one. Rolling? Marker. Miracle at Holiday. New title. All Girls Private School Christmas Break. 31, take one. <laughs> Action. Hey, Grandma, why don't you go in the kitchen and try some hash brownies? Okay. But it better be good dope. You know how Granny likes to fry her brain at Christmas. So what are you getting Kevin for Christmas? What else? This? Ooh! <laughs> Kid is going over like gangbusters. We gotta work him into a couple more scenes. Okay, let's tear down the set. Time is money. Let's move everybody. That was good, Booger. Here. December 23rd, just two days left to have all your Christmas shopping done. This is Stu Allen continuing with the Christmas spirit with a Deste Fidelis sung by Mr. Jackie Rogers Jr. Oh, I hate that Vegas hack. How people would pay money to see that? Oh, come on, come on with the Christmas carols. Genie, check the availability on the group called the Queen Haters. Do the soundtrack for all girls private school Christmas break. Good idea, Marty.
Krebsville? I don't remember passing through Krebsville. Okay, boys, that's it for choir practice. Be sure you're here next week, same time, all right? Hey, Father, before we go, can't we sing the B.I. Bay song? The B.I. Bay song? <laughs> that's curly as a jerk. Sure, sure. Excuse me, Father, I was wondering. I've had a bit of a car accident. Okay, now I want you all to bop your bees, all right? Father, please, if I could use your phone. All right, now, bop those bees in a one, two, one, two, three, four. B.I. Bay, B.I. Bo, B.I. Vicky Bay, B.I. Bay, Vicky Bay, Bo, B.I. Let's drive with a D. Father, I don't mean to be rude, but I am talking to you. I've had a car accident. What? Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? I can hear you, Marty. Bailey, where did you come from? I've been here all the time. But you were standing in the middle of the road. I will be again. I almost hit you. I was in the... And then I came here. And no one seems to be able to hear me. Now, what's going on? Well, Marty, it's not that hard to understand. Listen! Uh, in that trouble, boys! Bad trouble! Oh, hold on a minute, boys. Hold on a minute. Old man Krebs. Father Fitzgibbon, what's wrong? Is that Krebs? He's decided to renege on his agreement. No, he won't lease us the land we need to put the new orphanage on. Oh, no. Did he give you a reason or anything? Yeah. No, he thinks he can make a lot more money if he puts a parking lot there. A parking lot? Oh, that's a sign of the times, isn't it, Father? That Krebs is nothing but a two-faced, turncoat, Protestant son of... Oh, wait a minute, Father, now. Whoa, whoa. Watch your heart. Well, we're just going to have to do something, Father. We'll have to find some way to help build that orphanage. Well, I just hope everything will work out with a little bit of faith. You're right, Father. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's just that Krebs really burns me sometimes, you know. He promised he'd help us. Well, you got to remember, Father, that Krebs is a businessman, and businessmen tend to do business from their pocketbook and not from their heart. But it's so true. You know, I kind of feel sorry for those kids. Why is that, Marty? Well, they needed that land for an orphanage. But Mr. Krebs doesn't think it's good business. Practically. Come with me. 